Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty little village of Stuckton, just inside the New Forest. It's about one mile southeast of Fording Bridge. In fact, we're just inside the New Forest National Park. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular-ish route, taking in Stuckton and the outskirts of the neighbouring village at Blissford. We'll be going through a, a very tranquil New Forest Valley that's seen some very interesting history and some quite stunning scenery. Well, I'm filming in the middle of June. The sun is out. It is a glorious morning. Blue skies, hardly a cloud up there. Should be perfect conditions for a walk, so do come along with us. <laughs> Although I think uh, Logan will be quite happy snoozing in this uh, warm sunshine. Well, I know I often start off these walks in a church, but we're going to do something different today. We're going to start off in a churchyard, which is just behind me here. It's uh, the Fording Bridge Cemetery, and it's actually quite uh, isolated. Now, the churchyard at St Mary's Church in Fording Bridge, on the other side of the River Avon in the west, was closed to new burials in 1896. And um, this new cemetery was then uh, opened. Although um, I did read that the area has been used way back uh, to the Bronze Age for burials and uh, that there are marks in the grass that show basically locations of ploughed out Bronze Age barrows. But uh, very peaceful it is. So there is a, a building here, um, St Mary's Cemetery Chapel, but it, it's locked and, and it looks like the windows are boarded up. So I'm not too sure even if it's still used. Now there is a very interesting uh, grave in the uh, churchyard. It's in front of me here. It's that of Augustus John, the uh, worldwide recognised painter known amongst other things uh, for portraits of famous people during the first half of the 20th century. He was born in Wales, but he died in Fording Bridge in 1961. And uh, yeah, I can just about still make out um, his name there, but interesting, just looking underneath here, yeah, looks like uh, previous uh, visitors have left some coins. Well, just opposite the cemetery is the, the mighty Fording Bridge Bowling Club, which has actually uh, been around since 1927. So it's got a lovely outside green, which you can see here, chap preparing it for today's action used in the summer and they have a, uh, a short mat um, indoor bowling uh, facility that takes place in the clubhouse during the, the winter. Right, we need to uh, now look for a little footpath that's opposite uh, the bowling green. Ah, here we go. It's easy to miss. It's through this gate just in front of me. Well, just to get our bearings, let you know where we are and where we're going. The footpath that we're on now is going to eventually take us to um, Stuckton. You can probably hear a, a busy road on my right. That's the um, Fording Bridge to Ringwood Road. In fact, I think technically at the moment we're actually outside of the New Forest National Park. The boundary is um, literally the road that uh, goes, uh, well, basically from the cemetery up to Stuckton. It's glorious. It's uh, one of those really beautiful early summer mornings. Just enjoyed a little stroll across some fields and we're just about to enter Stuckton itself. It's not very big. 
In fact, uh, the little route or track that we're on now, I was reading they reckon was once an old smuggler's route used by smugglers uh, taking stuff off the, the forest and uh, into Fording Bridge, which is behind me. I tell you, it's beautiful today. It's going to be a warm one. Fortunately, I've got plenty of water for myself and Logan. And this is uh, Stuckton. And the footpath that we've come up uh, just um, finishes uh, at that gate there. But a few things to look at uh, while we're here. And particularly this building on the left, sort of opposite the um, footpath entrance is a, a house called the Foundry. And it was the home of Thomas Shepherd, who started the Stuckton Ironworks in 1790. And a foundry was built in 1807 to supply castings for agricultural tools and grain milling equipment. And I was reading that in 1830 the foundry was targeted and badly damaged by uh, agricultural workers rioting against the mechanisation of um, farming during the Swing Riots. Um, those were riots named after Captain Swing, who was a, a mythical name used to sign threatening letters to farmers and landowners, basically. Anyway, by uh, 1854, George Shepherd formed a partnership and uh, products were Mark Shepherd and Ingram, including a, a very decorative gas pillar and lamppost that is still in Church Street uh, in Fordingbridge today. Anyway, in the 1870s, the site was bought by Joseph Armfield and the foundry closed in 1908. But Armfield Agricultural Engineering Company continued throughout the 1950s. The chimney collapsed in the 1960s and its triangular bricks can still be seen around the parish as garden features today. But the site finally closed in the 1990s. This is the Three Lions pub. And there's been a building here since the 1600s. It uh, originally was a farmhouse and it's been extended over the years. It was still recorded as a house and barn in 1832, but by 1875 it was listed as the Three Lions and tenanted by a chap called Henry uh, Hockey as innkeeper and grocer. As you can see, it's now a, a sort of pub, restaurant and uh, hotel. And I was reading the website states that uh, there's a dog-friendly seating area in the bar, so we'll definitely have to investigate that at the end of the walk. Oh, I, I love it when uh, you have the old uh, house names that give you clues as to uh, their former use. This, the old police house. Well, we're now heading uh, southwards through Stuckton. See, there's a farm there, Brooklands Farm. Looks like it's owned by the county council, but perhaps tenanted, uh, not 100% sure. But it's just a couple of more things that uh, we want to have a look at before we uh, head out into the, the countryside proper, as it were. Just about to cross over a, a bridge that takes us over Ditch End Brook. We're going to be meeting that a few times during the walk, so I'll tell you more about that later. And there's also a sign there that tells us that we're now inside the New Forest National Park. Well, just over the uh, Ditch End Brook, um, I think this used to be a an old post office and um, there was a bakery, now a holiday let. And then next to it, there's uh, Stuckton Evangelical Church built in 1856. But uh, I don't think it's used now. There's a sign here that suggests no public access. But uh, yeah, it, it does look as though it's uh, not been used for a while. Well, I thought this might be interesting here, but I'm not so sure now. <laughs> According to an 1896 map, it shows that there was once an animal pound here, but uh, it looks as though it's gone, or perhaps if there are some remains, it might be behind the fence, I don't know. <laughs> I'll point it out anyway. And just to show that uh, we are indeed in the New Forest National Park now, a cattle grid there, obviously, to... Uh, stop the ponies and donkeys and cattle the grazing out in the new forest from escaping. What a pretty place uh, Stuckton is. Okay, so we're now gonna head out into the countryside proper, as it were, and uh, basically gonna follow a, a very uh, enchanting valley. <laughs>
just crossing the uh, the Ditch End Brook again. It, um, it actually flows into the River Avon to the west, but its source is ooh, far away in the east. It um, starts off life as a stream called Black Gutter in uh, Black Gutter Bottom. It's uh, basically in a valley to the south of Dead Man Hill and um, Roger Penny Way. And then the stream becomes Ditch End Brook when it flows through Ditch End Bottom. <laughs> I say flow. <laughs> During the summer it uh, often is bone dry further upstream, but it can become quite a raging torrent during the winter. But it's usually always flowing here because uh, there's actually a spring not far away that also um, feeds the water into it. <laughs> stop as we uh, go up the side of this uh, valley. Some beautiful views. Everything's so green now of course. I keep on going about it so it really is a beautiful day to be out. A couple of uh, horses there happily grazing away. Oh, it's, uh, beautiful. Just over in the distance there, the edge of the woods looks like a, a deer seat. And then just in front, look at all those foxgloves. They really are beginning to come out now. Okay, well, we'll continue. We're making our way uphill on the other side of the, uh, the valley. And just on my right, got uh, a little uh, area of conifers. I, you know, people often ask me which way I prefer, conifers or deciduous. And I, I kind of like both, but I prefer deciduous. I think the thing about conifers, if you look um, on the ground, nothing else seems to grow. You know, even the, even the bracken has given up in there. Um, at least with the sort of deciduous uh, forests, there's, there's more sort of uh, lushness at, uh, at ground level, if you know what I mean. Oh wow, what a splendid sight. Now, <laughs> I'm going to have to use my Canon uh, camera with a zoom for this, so the picture quality is going to be a bit uh, grainy and also I haven't had time to um, get my tripod out either, so it might be a bit uh, uh, up and down, but we'll see how we go. But oh, isn't that lovely, a, a herd of fallow deer. Oh bless them, I think they're having trouble with the flies looking at their ears flicking away. <laughs> a few of them have uh, spotted me and Logan but we're quite a fair distance away and we'll leave them be but um, it's, it's been quite interesting actually on the forest uh, noticeable over the last couple of years really the number of deer has really increased. Um, I don't know uh, whether or not there's been a change to the the culling um, system they've used. Uh, perhaps it might have been affected by the, um, you know, the, the lockdown, I don't know, but certainly a lot more deer about, but uh, lovely to see nonetheless. We're well, just making our way across a field and to my left, I can make out the, the top of a quite an interesting house. It's called the Merry Thought. It was built in the 1930s by uh, Lady Edith Hulse. She was the, uh, well, she was Salisbury's first woman mayor in 1927, and she married Sir Edward Henry Hulse in 1888. He was the uh, MP for Salisbury for 11 years, and uh, of course the Hulse family owned the Bremer estate and uh, Bremer House, in fact, they still do. Now, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Lady Hulse actually lived here or if it was just built for a specific reason. Um, she certainly built the Hulse Hall in Bremer, which is effectively the village hall today, um, in memory of her husband who, who died in 1903. She herself died in 1937. <laughs>
were just making my way through a gorgeous little track. It's called Broad Hill Lane and it's an old droving track and it, in fact it appears on a 1759 map and it was used for well, driving cattle basically from the pastures uh, to the west on the close to the River Avon um, out to um, some of the grazing land and the forests in the east. Well, I've just come into the outskirts of Blissford. Oh, what have we got here? What a brilliant name for a house. Boo Noo. Boo Noo. <laughs> what do you reckon, Logan? And this is the Ford at <laughs> Blissford. Uh, it's the Ditch End Brook underneath. And uh, I mentioned earlier on about a spring, and I think that uh, is just behind those trees there. Anyway, we are now going to, well, we're going to follow the, the route of the, uh, the brook for quite a while now as we start heading sort of southwards again, again, following a footpath. Wow, this is a lovely little shaded path for sure. Now, I was reading that, uh, well, somewhere along here on the right-hand side, there were some old um, cottages or remains of some old cottages. They were uh, encroachments into a a purlieu area before the uh, the 1800s. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Logan. Um, a purlieu is basically a Norman French word meaning outskirts of a forest or a, a place free from forest laws that, uh, unfortunately, I can't see anything here. Well, apart from there's a sort of big boundary bank here on the right, whether that had anything to do with the, the cottage, I'm not sure. I can't really investigate further because it, it's fenced off, so I'm presuming it's on, um, on private land. And the other thing I'm looking out for as well is a pond. Basically, the, the Ditch End Brook goes into a pond with a weir. Um, it doesn't show on an 1897 map, um, but it does show on a 1957 map. And Oh, we're probably not going to see it, but um, just bear that in mind because uh, I will mention it later on in the walk. Just what the, uh, the doc had ordered, a little dog dip area. I don't, <laughs> I don't think Logan was that very impressed with it though. <laughs> Do you want to have another go? <laughs> uh, is it any better second time round? <laughs> well, it's covering your paws, that's cooling those down. <laughs> Good boy. Well, I've just done a little detour off the main route of the walk, crossed over the Ditch End Brook again, because a couple of things that I want to show you on this side of the stream. Now, if you look at a very, very old map, 1897, just behind me here, there were some watercress beds. In fact, if I put the map up on screen, you can see how big they were. And what I'll do is I'll then superimpose it with the current aerial shot but basically the brook is on my right and well the watercress beds would have been right up against where the edge of that wood is today and I'm guessing that um, it would have been fed from that spring um, further upstream presumably there must have been some sort of channel feeding the watercress bed at uh, the top end and then flowing back into the brook. I don't know, but, and that's where I think that pond um, came into use. But it's odd that it doesn't appear on an 1897 map, but I'm guessing that the, the pond was built um, to make sure there was a constant stream of water into the watercress beds. I don't know, I'm just guessing. But let's have a look at the, uh, 
the stream itself because so it's an unusual place, I think, to see a watercress bed. And just right by the, the Ditch End Brook here. So you usually associate watercress with areas close to clear, free-flowing chalk streams, such as, oh, I don't know, around the River Itchen in Hampshire, for example. But if you look at the water here, it's very brown in colour, as indeed is the, uh, the bed of the stream. And that's mainly uh, due to the um, iron content further upstream. But you wouldn't have thought that uh, this would have been conducive to, uh, to growing watercress, but yeah, clearly it was. And indeed, just uh, along here, in fact, yes, here you can see this is where the, the, the channel from the watercress bed came into the stream. You can see it's a different type of um, foliage. So the watercress beds themselves were along the back there. Long gone into history now, of course. Now, the other interesting uh, aspect about this area is that it's thought that this was once the location of the Blissford Smallpox Hospital. It was an extensive site of wooden huts built in 1903 with the support of Fordingbridge residents and uh, estate owners. And it was built during an outbreak of smallpox in the gypsy community in around about 1903. The whole area was sort of cordoned off and uh, it wasn't actually reopened again and put back into pasture until around about 1940. But so there's no formal records as to where it was. So it was roughly around here. Oh, very much on the homeward leg now, coming back into Stuckton. What a quite delightful thatched cottage, keeper's cottage. Isn't that beautiful? In fact, um, as we wander through Stuckton, there are some quite idyllic uh, houses and cottages. I mean, look at this one here on my right, another um, thatch with um, you know, white uh, painted walls and such, so beautifully kept and maintained. I mean, isn't that beautiful? And the roses outside. You know, it could appear on a chocolate box, couldn't it? Oh, what about this one? <laughs> isn't that gorgeous? Again, a thatch, it's actually called Little Thatch. Again, beautiful yellow roses by the porch. I love the, um, the old milk churn as well in the, the garden. Quite stunning. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside's Walks. We've had another super walk today. The weather has been glorious and uh, the countryside uh, quite enchanting. We're off to the uh, Three Lions for a swift half. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. Thank <music> you.